In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for bringing us together to learn about how to serve you better in the Holy Eucharist. We pray that your Holy Spirit may come down and enlighten our minds and hearts. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, uh, we'll just do a um, very, very quick uh, revision. Uh, I was meant to put this on PowerPoint, uh, but then a, it just works as fine on uh, Microsoft Word. Okay, um, concerning the Word of God, last time we emphasized that it's the uh, cornerstone of our faith uh, and even um, one of the parts of the liturgies, the liturgy of the Word. Um, so it's an important part of not just the Mass, uh, but sometimes prayer services and all that. Because after uh, the Second Vatican Council, the Church emphasized um, increased access of the Word of God uh, to uh, Catholics. Mm -hmm. So even if it's a prayer service, it's good if the Word of God uh, can be read in it. And it's important to remember that the readings uh, come from sacred scripture. They're not just made up by some bishop or some priest. They're actually from the Holy Bible. Okay. Uh, some background knowledge. The, some people call it the Catholic Bible, but it has nothing to do with being Catholic or not. Uh, but it has everything to do with being complete. So the complete books of the Bible, or what some people call the Catholic Bible, is 73, okay? And then out of 73, only 46 are for the Old Testament, okay? And then 27 is the New Testament. And then we have four Gospels, okay? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the Psalms, they are divided into 150 of what some people call poems, okay, or chapters. Okay, and then um, the books um, associated with reading at Mass, we have this one. If you remember, it's the lectionary, okay? Yeah, it contains uh, the readings, either weekday readings or Sunday readings, okay? And then Another book that a lector should be familiar with is the General Intercessions Booklet. Some parishes make their own, uh, some dioceses have their own, some regions have their own, something like that. They can also be prepared weekly. Then, um, during Mass, I think you've seen the deacon holding up a, the Book of Gospels. So that only contains the Gospels, the four Gospels, okay? And then there's the order, which I showed you last time, a small booklet, uh, which indicates the readings of the day, okay? It also gives instructions about the mass, whether funeral masses are permitted and the liturgical color and other things, okay? And then it differs from diocese to diocese and region to region, okay? But generally, it's the same for the whole church unless it's a particular feast for the particular church. And then there's the, as regards the structure of the readings, we have the first reading, the second reading, well, first reading, uh, responsorial psalm, uh, the second reading. The gospel acclamation is actually not a reading, okay? It's just a, an introduction to the gospel. And then we have the, gospel that is read at Mass. So most of the time the first reading is from the Old Testament, second reading from one of the Pauline letters, the letters of St. Paul, okay? And then the gospel is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, okay? Uh, maybe let me ask you a question here. Uh, do you think there's any connection between the source of the readings, Old Testament, New Testament, Gospels, 
and uh, Jesus Christ himself. Do you see any connection? Uh, most people say uh, the Old Testament uh, contains the prophecy about the becoming of Jesus, the incarnation of Jesus. It tells the story of Jesus before he becomes man, okay? Uh, so it's God um, speaking to us, okay? And we listen in the first reading. Okay, then the responsorial psalm, uh, uh, it actually touches the heart because it is very close um, to how human life is actually lived. It contains a wide range of emotions. And so because we are touched by the word of God that we've heard in the first reading, we we'll respond with the responsorial psalm. Um, yeah. And it also helps us to meditate on the second reading. And then the second reading is from the Pauline letters. It usually contains a moral teaching from the first church, from the early church. Usually, sometimes St. Paul says things that are not very much appreciated these days, like women should know their place in the church. But it is all contextual, okay? That's not how we understand it today okay it has to be interpreted in its own context and time uh, yeah and then there's the gospel acclamation uh, which prepares us for the gospel that we are about to hear and then in the gospel itself jesus who has become flesh who has uh, become one of us assumed the human condition speaks to us about the Father and the coming of the kingdom. Uh, you remember these things that the Sunday readings, especially the Gospels, are organized into a three-year cycle, year A, year B, year C. So in year A, we read the Gospel of Matthew, year B, Gospel of St. Mark, but then the Gospel of St. Mark is short. So sometimes in year B, it is supplemented with uh, other readings uh, from the Gospel of St. John and something like that. And then year C is the Gospel of St. Luke. So what about the Gospel of St. John? Is it not read or do you not pay? Ah, yes, yes. So it's usually read during feast days and certain solemnities, okay? And then some important things to remember is that the uh, readings are the word of God and therefore they cannot be changed or substituted with anything else, okay? They are scriptural. And then the gospel reading is reserved for the deacon or priest. Then on Sunday and during solemnities and special celebrations, we have two readings, the second reading actually. And then during Lent, no Alleluia, okay? There's another gospel acclamation and other things to be read. So the lectionary is usually weekday or Sunday. It's the same, you know, the, the message and the text is the same. What might vary is just the translation, okay, that's all. And then you need to use the correct formula to begin and to end the reading. Uh, don't be creative. <laughs> if you find anything in brackets during um, the reading of the text, just read it. Uh, for some feasts, um, there's a choice of two readings. So you have to check with the priest or the deacon which one to read because they usually prepare their homily or sermon according to the reading they've chosen. And then if there's a long form or short form, you always read the long form unless you've been instructed to read the short form. Okay. The short form is usually read to for pastoral reasons, to save time during long liturgies in the evening when people are from work, okay? Yes, uh, do you have any questions about the readings or anything? Okay, very clear. So I just picked out a summary uh, from last week's session and then added a few more things into it. So I'd be happy to share this um, with you through the line group or through Melissa. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty Father, we ask you to bless each one of us and uh, help us to love your word and be your witness in the world. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mary, help of Christians, pray, pray for us. us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.